Another cyber attack is threatening the online safety of Australians this morning, with hackers now targeting the personal information of Medibank customers. The health insurer confirming it has received messages from a group looking to sell confidential customer information, including sensitive health conditions and credit card details. Well, a big worry for a lot of Australians this morning, this news, almost 4 million Medibank customers are waking up to this. Hackers claim to have stolen tons of data and are holding it at a ransom. Joining us with his insight is cybersecurity expert Troy Hunt. Nice to see you this morning, Troy. We're still waiting for this to be verified, but how concerning is it? Well, it's very concerning given the nature of the data and, and the volume of customers as well, and, and particularly the, the ransom claim here in, in terms of pay money or we're going to start releasing information about prominent people or underprivileged people or people with just very personal medical information. It's different to Optus in a way because it is um, so personal. Uh, is there anything that the people can do at all right now? There's, there's really not. I mean, once that data is out there, it's, it's out of your control, it's out of Medibank's control. So at the moment, everyone's just waiting to, to see if the claims are true and, and if they are, what information is out there and what gets leaked. What would be happening behind the scenes right now at Medibank? And I know that the Home Affairs Department is involved too. Well, inevitably, verification. They're going to clearly want to figure out whether this is legitimate or not. And you, you have to wonder, given the, the statements are already made, even to the ASX, they've probably gone through and established that there is mm -hmm. at least a, a high degree of confidence in the legitimacy. Of course, figuring out how someone else got it as well. Where did they get in? Has that been patched? Uh, are the systems now secure? Uh, and then, of course, figuring out how to try and uh, keep all this contained. Oh, look, the big thing is here, um, I mean, we saw what happened with Optus, uh, and, and every company, I'm sure, across Australia was having a look at their procedures and protocols. Mm -hmm. And then a couple of weeks later, uh, we have this organisation that has such private information breached again. Yeah, look, that's, that's very true. And, of course, uh, Medibank and, and Optus are just, just two very familiar There's names. all sorts of other brands out there that I'm sure are, are spending a lot of time reflecting on their systems at the moment. And it's, it's not just those two. Australia's seen Vinomofo in the last few days, as well as the MyDeal service as well. But the, so there's oh, just the, a huge amount of data breaches going on. But the, gov the government came out and, and, you know, shouted from the rooftops that they were doing something about this, that they were going to try and legislate and, and try and stop it from happening, make sure companies are up to speed with all, with all their procedures and protocols, and boom. Yeah, look, we've got to remember, we're in the same boat as everyone else around the world. Everyone's getting targeted at the moment. There's so much information that is online. It's, it's such a, a rich field of personal data. And the attackers could well be somewhere on the other side of the world with very little chance of, of being found or any recourse against them. So, you know, they see this as low risk, high reward, and it's, it's really not surprising we're seeing more of it. So, Troy, what faith can we have in our information online being safe? It's a bit of an absolute term, isn't it? Is it safe or unsafe? I think the only thing that we know at the moment is that when we provide information to another party, uh, not necessarily online, even in paper form, it, it ends up being digitised and there's always a risk of exposure. Uh, and this is just the, the reality of, of having very digital lives these but days. But we have such faith, though, mm. uh, in these companies. And again, um, the government was trumpeting this, that they were doing something about it. We know that there are going to be breaches sometimes, but, but companies need to be up to speed, don't they? I mean, that something needs to be done now, today, in, in order to stop our personal information from getting out there. It's not good enough. Well, we, we really want to know, particularly in the case of something like Optus, which we're now many weeks into, like, what actually happened? Did they take right. reasonable steps under the circumstances and someone was just super sophisticated and managed to get through all the defences? We don't believe that's the case in Optus. We think we know how that happened. And then there's a question of what sort of regulatory controls do we need to either uh, reduce the likelihood of it happening or reduce the harm or, or possibly penalise the organisation as well. I thought we would have moved uh, a little bit quicker on this. Um, anyway, thank you for your time. Well, really concerning news if you're a Medibank customer this morning. Uh, hackers who claim they have tonnes of private data issuing a ransom. Now, especially concerning the wake of the Optus hack, and you've got plenty of questions, so do we. Here to answer them is today tech expert Trevor Long. Trev, nice to see you this morning. Do we know what information they've got? Well, this is the problem. We know what information Medibank has. We don't yet know what the alleged hackers have. In the case of the Optus one, they provided some evidence. They, they kind of showed what information they have. But here, the hackers are essentially saying, we've got private information about diagnosis, uh, about uh, treatments, 
uh, obviously other personal information, and that's that's the concern for both Medicare and the Medicare customers right now. The weird, lack of, I mean, the lack of information transparency here. I, I guess they're trying to balance the whole idea of giving out the information um, that has been hacked. But I mean, I thought we'd we'd at least try to address this, and the government tried to address it, try to ensure that companies are on top of this. They can't get this kind of personal data, and they've got maximum protection. Well, that's the problem, Carl. We, we, we're going to have to act on all this, you know, retrospectively and going forward, but it doesn't change any existing cyber attacks. So the government can bring in all the legislation in the world, which we need to, uh, about encryption and where data is held and how. But the fact is that if these systems, whether it's uh, Medibank, Optus, my deal through Woolworths, if these systems are open to hackers, they can get the information. And what's going to happen here is if Medibank don't pay a ransom, which I don't believe they should, of course, um, the, if, they, if the hacker does have information about individuals, they will contact individuals and potentially ransom them. And that's where the next concern is going to be, is emails we're going to get that may be scams, mm -hmm. but may be legitimate hackers suggesting that they know things about us and they're going to release it on the internet. And that's going to put people who don't want their private medical information shared online. And, and this is the issue, isn't it? And different to Optus, this is incredibly private information that could potentially be shared. Look, um, we, we've had a couple of questions coming in that we want to put to you. Um, this one from David Quinn, and this is one that's shared by quite a few people. What should we do to protect ourselves and our personal information? Well, this is the challenge. The information that's being hit here is with other other companies. So for you as an individual, what you need to do is be vigilant about the emails you receive, the text messages you receive, and, and don't trust those things when there's information. Have internet security software that can actually protect your identity a little bit online. But in this case, again, it's less about your identity and identity fraud and more about you being either ransomed or scammed. So high alert around information about your health information. Okay, another question um, here from Michael who says, how will I tell the difference between an authentic email uh, from Medibank and one that's fake? Well, if you have been getting emails from Medibank, and I'm a Medibank customer, I've got an email on the 13th, the 17th and 19th of October, you'll know what that looks like and they don't include links to anything but their information page. So if you get an email from Medibank suggesting you click here to protect your information, click here to update or remove your information from our systems, do not believe it, do not click it. The only place you should go is the Medibank website. And by the way, it's also AHM, which is another kind of sub-brand under the Medibank banner. Those are the places to go. Just go directly to the websites. Don't trust anything in those emails if there's links to other things or calls to action in emails. It is scary for a lot of people. Thanks, Trev. Scary. It makes me sick. Mm. Like, this is, this is horrendous for people that they're the most personal, private, health information mm. and being potentially exposed. Like, it, it really... It, I feel really aggrieved about this, even more so than Optus. I mean, it's just... It's awful for people out there sitting there going, are, are people going to find out my details about what happened in this operation? And mm. Like, it, it, we need to... Then the government said they, uh, a couple of weeks ago they'd be right on top of this. They need to be right into Medibank right now um, to f trying to find out if they had all the walls up they needed to. Well, how can any of us feel safe with the information we share with whether it's our telecommunications company, yeah. whether it's a health insurance company? Especially with your health history. Well, that's it. No one wants to read that. <laughs> Medibank has paused trading as new details emerge about a data breach. Hackers are claiming to have stolen the data of almost 4 million customers. As Liam Tabber reports, the health insurer says it's received messages from the group looking to negotiate. Hey, good morning. Well, the latest company here in Australia to fall victim to a cyber security attack, Medibank Private, is now facing an escalating problem. The people claiming to be behind this latest data hack are now wanting to be in negotiations with the company over a ransom amount to be paid for this specific data. Now, Medibank haven't confirmed whether they will in fact negotiate with these people. However, they do say that they are investigating this and taking it seriously. They've employed a third party cyber security firm along with working with the Australian Cyber Security Centre.
they've been quite rapid to uh, to come out with comms to the public to explain what's been happening. They've provided updates as well, um, but they haven't gone into an enormous amount of detail until they're, they're certain as to what's going on. They've also pulled in the, the help and support of the ACSC and the Information Commissioner, which shows they're taking this threat very, very seriously. Now, some 4 million Medibank customers are set to be impacted by this hack, and it's raised real concerns about just how much information these companies hold about individuals and also what can happen if it goes wrong. Now, this is just the latest in a number of recent data hacks, of course. Woolworths and Optus were both victims in recent weeks. Medibank say that they are working as hard as they can to make sure that they get on.